And thank you. This is Shell Broadnax with RISA, Real Estate Staging Association, and I am here on Stager Talk. Stager Talk is a podcast that's been around since about 2015, and it was just the podcast, just the audio, and this clearly is the year of video. So we are trying video for the very first time today, and I'm so pleased today that I have two wonderful guests with me. Number one is Helen Bartlett, and then also Becky Harmon. So welcome both of you to the show. Thank you, Shell. I appreciate you asking us. Absolutely. So let's start with you, uh, Helen. Would you tell everybody the name of your company and where are you from? Yep. I am from Kansas City, Kansas, and the name of my company is Refined Interior Staging Solutions, and I've been staging since 2011. Awesome. And you are also the chairperson of the Real Estate Staging Association Board of Directors. Yes, that's quite an honor and responsibility, yes, that I'm thrilled awesome. with. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm thrilled you're on board. We're very happy to have you as well. And Thank Becky, you. can you tell everybody your company name and what it is that you do and where you're from? Um, our company is Transformation Staging and Redesign School. Uh, we do have a training academy in Jacksonville, Florida. We started the company in 2004 and added the training in 2006. So we've seen a lot of changes in the industry in all these years. So it's very exciting to be a part of it and to see RisaCon um, flourishing and growing each year. And um, every year the topics are always amazing. And we all learn so much from one another. Right, for sure. I remember when we did the first RisaCon, were either one of you at the very first one? No. No. I did I don't. I think I joined in 2012. Or even oh, yeah. So if you did, yeah, if you didn't start your business in 2011. So we started in, I think it was 2009. And um, I remember the first one was so good. And I walked away with such a good feeling of accomplishment. And then I went, oh, my God. How am I going to beat that next year? What did I do? I was like, this, I'm just, why did I do this? And it was like every year you've got that pressure to up your game. And um, miraculously, we've done it. You know, the, the speakers, the right speakers show up. Um, and what's happened now over the last few years is that the industry has really changed to where now we have what we're calling season stagers, where in the beginning we didn't. So the topics were really being, were really towards somebody in the beginning of their business or the mid-level of their business. And there wasn't enough for the season stager. So the last few years, people started saying, you know, I need something else. We need a little bit higher level topics. So we would pull everybody say, what is your higher level topics? And we can start delivering those. So I'm really happy in the last two, three years that we've had more advanced topics. This year is no different. Uh, we're going to have um, lots of it, several advanced topics, especially one Ryan Marsh is coming from on stage. And Ryan and Todd have grown that company to now three locations, three different states they're in with their staging business extremely profitable I mean they have w2 employees trucks they pay everybody people get vacations it's a real it's a real company you know and yeah. uh, we're really happy and so honored that he's going to come and tell everybody how he did it so that's, we're that's super stoked about that yeah so and I think I think it's really great how you decided to make different levels of classes because I always, um, you know, there were always like two or three classes that I felt like I could choose from in one given period. And then you kind of divided it out and did one basically a beginner, mid, and then season stager all in the same hour. So you could kind of pick and choose what level you were at. So that, that's been huge. I think that's been a great adjustment. Thank you. you know, and people, you can go if somebody sees a topic and it says it's advanced. If you're a newbie, it doesn't mean you can't go. You can. But there may be some things that you're not there yet, like the prerequisites of your own business. So there might be some certain things that doesn't apply to you yet, but it's good knowledge to be able to have if you're definitely, if you're moving in that direction, for sure. For sure. So Becky, why don't you share with us, what is your topic at RisaCon? I am speaking about design elements, flooring, um, backsplashes, countertops, anything that is permanently installed in the home. And I feel like this is one area that, that RISA can benefit from. It goes into the, all the new materials that we have now in flooring, lots of options for staging and for redesign. Um, we, we miss opportunities when we're not 
asking our seller, let's go to the new house and work on that after we sell it. So great opportunity. So are you able to touch on for people like let's you're staging the home and you know as a stager there's things that need to be replaced, countertops and things like that. So will you be able to teach people what is your best, most economical options for the biggest bang on your buck when you're doing a stage then versus maybe if you're doing a redesign for somebody that you know, your options might be a little bit different. Yes, we, yes. one of my one favorite, of my favorite things, things is to find a less expensive less way to have, have a great look. And I have so many examples of homes that went to the house and they just needed a backsplash or um, they needed the kitchen cabinets to be painted, inexpensive updates and how to uh, be professional when you recommend things, how to know what's, what's uh, working and what isn't working. For instance, uh, we have a beautiful $700,000 house at the beach that wouldn't sell because it had 12-inch ugly 70s white tile. And the homeowner was planning to install hardwood floors after being unsuccessful on the market for so long. And we just did the new um, luxury vinyl planking. Oh, no. We go. Technical difficulties. <laughs> I love technology. You're back. I'm sorry. So there's lots of options, and I feel like we all can learn more in that arena. My background is interior design, and so I get, you know, at least five to six hours a year of continuing education in all of these areas. So I feel like I have to stay on the cutting edge to keep my uh, ASID credentials. Uh, another thing that I observed when I did my taxes the first year that I started um, staging, a third of my income was from referral fees. <clears throat> and all of these companies that offer flooring and, and backsplashes and countertops offer great referral fees, so we should be tapping into that. Absolutely. That's, that's a very, very good point. Um, I know in my area so many people could use redesign in these homes that I've been looking to looking to relocate, buy another home. And in my area, every house seems to have this, we can't really see it, but in back of me, this four by four cream tile. It wasn't popular in 1989, Becky, when they built this house, but yet everybody has it. And no matter where I go and look at these homes here, nobody's done anything to change it. So I've just been spending time um, on my own home because we're preparing it to sell much to my uh, husband's resistance is actually telling me why are you why are we spending seven thousand dollars on countertops when you're selling this house and I just look at him and just throw my hands up I said are you kidding me what do you mean why I can't not do this it's an, an investment this is this is our nest egg it's our biggest asset that we have and when you sell it with this these little tiles behind me I look at that and I think it's, it's horrific. I don't want to pay $400,000 for a home that has that. When it really wasn't popular in the late 80s, but they used it because it was cheap. And uh, he can't seem to understand that, but I do. So we did replace it. And we actually used an LG Hymax out of Lowe's. And um, then I'm actually doing the Rust-Oleum paint transformations, Ooh, um, wow. cabinet transformations. And I'm doing that on the cabinets. And it's actually turning out really well. Um, wow. And I'm kind of documenting as I go, so I'll do a blog or a, um, take some great before and after pictures when we're done. So I I always joke with people that I don't like um, I don't like doing the actual staging, but renovating and demo and all that it's like I'm really good at that. I like that. I know I can put things together. I don't know how I do it, but I've done it in two homes now. And I like doing that, but to stage every day, I like more the provider services side. I want to help people grow their businesses. So I'm really looking forward to your talk, um, Becky. And Helen, let's talk a little bit about what you are going to talk about. Okay. Uh, my, well, my topic is called owning the owner-occupied market um, for stagers who want to either focus specifically on owner-occupied stagings or just add that to their um revenue source because when I first started I thought that was the easiest way to get into home staging was to really work with what people had and uh, use what they had and refine it and make it better and help them out uh, because not everyone is in a situation where they have the top of the line furnishings art or accessories in their homes and I think by 
like honoring how they lived and editing, editing, going through an editing process with them, you can help anyone at any level. And I saw there was a big need for that because I saw these photos on um, open house photos or real estate information. And I just thought these people really need help. They, their house could look so much better. And that's really why I got into it at the time, because I thought I had worked for about 30 years in what I believe prepared me to be a home stager. I, th I have a background in um, real estate where I managed a title company. I had my own little uh, retail store in the in interior design business. And right before I got into staging, I was in a sales and marketing job. And what I realized was home staging is a sales and marketing job. It is about creating a product that's going to appeal to that buyer. And it really helps. It helped me so much that I understood real estate. It helped me so much that I understood design. And combining all three of those major experiences in my work life, I feel has really benefited me in so many ways. And I don't think I could be the stager that I am without having all those years of work and experience. And, you know, so I know now I'm doing exactly what I need to be doing. I know that. And I'm thrilled. And anyway, so that. These are people who really need help and understanding each situation is different. You know, doing a vacant, you kind of control all aspects of it. You can, you know, work with a budget, you can set the design, but I think doing an owner occupied home really, um, ha you have to be creative and you have to be resourceful. And it's, it's such a big stress reliever for so many people. And to be part of that really makes you feel good. Absolutely. And I also agree with what you had said about when people start out, it seems like a logical way. If you don't have a huge investment to put into your business from the get go, that you can't start out doing occupieds. And a lot of people just start out doing the consoles. Let's just do the console. You've got no overhead. You can go in and DIY it. You know, there's a lot of people that want to do it themselves. And so if you set a great price, you go in, you give a good product, you spend two, two and a half hours. Tell them everything they can possibly do, and they do all the work on their own. You've been paid. It's profitable for you. They have a good return on their investment because now they know what to do. And then if they still need you and they're overwhelmed, then they can call you in to do the actual staging. And I think that um, because a lot of people, you know, people are, on one hand, they are a little bit afraid of the occupies, I think, mm -hmm. because there has to be so much interaction with the homeowners. Mm -hmm. that, that can be a little intimidating. So are you going to be able to talk about that a little bit in your talk as well? Yeah, absolutely. And it is intimidating because, you know, I noticed um, when I first started off staging, because I didn't know any better, I went in with a flat rate. I will do this for you. It doesn't matter how many hours it will take me. It's one flat fee. And I quickly learned that there were people taking advantage of that. And they would call me in for these 6,000 square foot homes, but not call me for the little ones. So, um, Anyway, once I changed my pricing and went by the hour, uh, things changed. But what I do notice is now that people are paying me by the hour, I still have some things to deal with. And that is the minute you walk through their door, they want you to start creating and doing and working. And you have to kind of take it in and you have to figure out who they are and you know what this house has and what all the other rooms have. And is there anything somewhere else that would work better? Because you know it's all about that first impression. And they don't realize that it takes some time to figure this part out. And that is intimidating sometimes, you know. And a way that I buy myself some time is that I say to them, well, first let me kind of take a look around through the whole house. In the meantime, I'm still thinking about that first room that I just walked into where they wanted me to start doing my magic, as they say, you know. But, but it's not that simple. And it is intimidating because they don't understand the process. They think you just come in and there's a set way, but there isn't. Every home is different. Every situation is different. And you have to make the best of whatever that is. And if they were all the same, it would be easy. You know, there are things you can do that are all the same. And that's a big part of what I'm going to talk about in my um, uh, session as well is I think doing an owner occupied staging, what makes you successful is having some kind of system in place and the confidence to do it. Because once you have a system that you go through and you can kind of checklist what's important, what are the priorities, and say it with confidence to those homeowners, they are more likely to trust you. And when they trust you, that just makes your whole job easy. Because if you're fighting and trying to win their trust through this whole process, 
that yeah. exhausting. So absolutely, yeah. Yeah. You, absolutely. you never know. I think confidence, confidence is key. And I think also with even picking uh, the finishings, Becky, intimidation, boy, that can be really intimidating because you're afraid to make the wrong call. And I know in, in our home, we're switching things over. So I'm going more towards the stainless steels, the uh, more the nickel, the brushed, you know, nickel, things like that. And then God bless that husband of mine who placed something on the on the front door and went with brass. And I was just like, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? But he, there's somebody who DIY'd it. He didn't know. Of course, he didn't take a consult for me. He was telling him not to do that. So that's also intimidating when you're picking things out. But what I've found too is, you know, I kind of always relate these business analogies back to my horse experiences. And to gain your confidence, it's just time. It's time in doing it. It's like you can't shortcut it. When you're learning to ride a horse, it was like, how long is it going to take me where I find my balance and I, I, I feel comfortable on the horse? Well, if you're only riding once a week, it's going to take you 10 years to do that. But if you do something every day, and you practice and you keep doing that and you keep working on that craft no matter what it is you just get better and better and your confidence goes sky high yes i, I do agree with that and i i believe that the um occupied home can take more creativity to figure it out it's like you can't go in with the pattern and repeat it sometimes second staging is planned ahead of time and you know exactly where everything's going to go. But in Occupied, I think you don't always know what the whole plan's going to be until you try A and then go to B and then C. And sometimes you have to undo it and try something else. So I think it takes a lot of creativity. The consultation is a perfect opportunity to make a recommendation in replacing carpet. And if you don't know a little more than your homeowner about carpet or Flooring, if needed in a high-end neighborhood, you may have to um, replace countertops and more expensive upgrades. Um, you don't have to know everything if you're dealing with a company like Consource because they're going to make sure that you have the right application. Like, for instance, bamboo floors can't go on every surface. And so you don't have to remove that and know that as long as you're dealing with a company where they have the expertise in the application. And so we're not, you know, the, the last person to decide that. We do want to check with the realtor. Sometimes the sports countertops may or may not be what is going to make them competitive in their neighborhood. So we like to uh, join with the realtor when we make recommendations because we don't want to over improve either. Yeah, it's important to get the return on your investment. I know my father, uh, his home, he lived in North Carolina. He had a beautiful, beautiful home. And compared to California, you'd get like a double wide on a quarter, you know, quarter acre for $350,000. But in North Carolina, it was just this beautiful, beautiful home, beautiful yard, the whole bit. But he spent $50,000 remodeling his kitchen. And I looked at him, I said, now, Michael, <laughs> you know you're not going to make that money back. And he's in a position where he said, I don't care, I wanted the great kitchen. So it didn't matter for him. But yeah, that overspending, uh, you, when you're, especially when you're doing this for a sale, it is somebody's number one asset. And you don't want to overdo it because you want them to make those make that money back. And actually, Risa, we've been doing a study of homes that are selling for over list price and um, the percentages of what they are broken down by different price points in homes. It's quite interesting. And also interesting that we're going to release these stats in the next couple of weeks, by the way, so I'll give everybody a little preview, is what it also shows is what has always shown with the history since we've been doing this is that when you invest in staging, um, if you if it's vacant and it goes on the market first unstaged, people spend a lot of time and they just sit. And then, it, then they pull it and they decide to call in a stager and the stager stages it. It will sell and it'll sell in about 42 days versus if you had listed it staged first, they sell in about 23 days. In addition, what it is that, how much money you get at that point if you test your waters first ends up being less for a final sell price. Versus when you stage it first, list it first, um, that way when it's for the first time, first make it, then stage it, then list it, then you get it sold in 20-something days, much shorter, and you get a higher return over list price. 
So it's amazing when you when you just kind of pull it all together. It really is a science. Right. And you know, those stats are going to help every one of us out there to be able to share this information with homeowners or investors or anybody that we're working for just to show the difference because people always look at the cost of staging as the actual cost that they're writing the check for. But what they don't realize is that there is a cost involved in holding on to the property longer and they don't take that into consideration. Right. Absolutely. Those carrying costs and you know, where do they want to be in? 30, 60 days, they want to be in a new house someplace. Right. And, and you know, a new trend that I've been um, noticing or been aware of in the past, probably several months, is, you know, you talk about spending the money to update your kitchen and, and how your um, father-in-law spent $50,000 and he didn't care. What people are doing now is they are calling me and saying, I want to work on my house because I'm going to sell it in three to five years, but I need to upgrade it now and I want to enjoy it. So can you help me make choices that will work in three to five years? And I find that interesting because I mean, I'm doing that myself. I know in five years I'd like to sell my house. And so everything I'm doing in my own home, I'm keeping in mind, I don't want this to be a big expense in three to five years whenever I choose to do that. Yeah. That's what we did. And fortunately with us, at least in the kitchen, it was something that I liked and I am going to enjoy it, but I think it's going to definitely add value to the home. Um, so as soon as I get done with these cabinets, it's been so cold we can't paint anymore because the, the painting's not working when it's super cold outside. But uh, next we'll move on to the bathrooms and see what we can do there. That'll be interesting as well. <laughs> so tell me about um, anything else that you ladies want to talk about. I know that um, we talk a lot about Resacon and the actual sessions that people have. And as Helen already mentioned, we have three sessions running at a time. And they are typically, if you're a newbie, if you're mid-level, applies to everybody or definitely advanced. So we do break them up that way. You can go and, and see whichever uh, sessions that you want to. But in addition just to the, the sessions that we have, we have two keynote speakers. We have Vern Yip this year. And uh, Vern Yip was probably my, my favorite uh, person on trading spaces back in the early 2000s. Uh, when I first got into the staging industry in 2002, I watched trading spaces on the regular. I mean, every week. We, this, it was just a thing to do, and I was so interested in it. And then now we also have Mike Michaelwitz, who's the author of the book Profit First. So he's going to really teach everybody how to be more profitable in your business. And it's so important, especially if you're new, that you're profitable from the get-go. If you're mid-level and you're not sure, this is something that you're going to want to see. And even when you're a senior stager or seasoned stager, you still have to hone in on those profits and make sure that what you're doing is actually profitable and helping you grow your business. So those two keynote speakers. And then let's talk a little bit about the camaraderie just the peer-to-peer -peer learning that happens when you're there with 400 plus other people. What do you think about that, Helen, as a benefit of Resicon? I think that's amazing. That's amazing. I've made some I've made really, really great, friends great friends since my first Resicon um, that I'm that so I'm lucky so and privileged to know. to know. So I've, so I've learned, learned so much so from or have been inspired by or I, I just think you can't relate that experience to anything else. You get so much out of Resicon through the education and the classes and all that information, but you get so much more with the personal contacts you make and the people who become your friends and the people you can bounce ideas off of because a lot of us are in like a one woman or man show here. And you don't have somebody to say, what do you think? Or, you know, did I mess up? Or, you know, how do I handle this? And just knowing you can reach out to so many people across the country who are there for you and supportive. I mean, there's nothing like it. It's, a, it's an amazing experience to be part of in so many ways. I agree. The first time I went to a Risa conference, and I don't remember exactly what it was. I don't know. My expectations weren't that high. But I came away so excited. I couldn't sleep for a couple of days. I just didn't know what to start with. I had such a wealth of notes and, and information. And I honestly approached some of the uh, presentations thinking, well, I don't need this, but I'm curious to see what they have to say. And one of them was Karen Otto in her presentation on consultations. And I thought, well, I've been doing consultations for years. I don't need this. But it was I learned 
a lot. I changed some of my systems because of that. And it was it was very beneficial. And as every every speaker, the contracts class at David from Seattle, I believe, or Portland, um, I thought I had that pretty much figured out. And I I just feel like if you had to sit well, hire someone to give you the information that we got in those just those two classes. Um, it was way worth the travel expense and the expense of recent. It was it was fabulous. I was just like I had stars in my eyes, and so it's and I live about as far away from the conference as you can get. In but it is so worth it, and you can't get that much in one place. Yeah, you know what I find with things too, because I, I listen to the, some of the speakers and there's definitely things that I've done throughout my career that I used to do on the regular. I used to do this, it was it was just the way I did business. And then for whatever reason, you don't even realize that it happens, but slowly you just stop doing it and you don't even realize that you didn't, you're not doing it anymore. And then you listen to somebody and you're like, when did I stop doing that? I, I used to do this all the time. And then it just kind of, it's a good reminder and a refresher to get back into a habit that you used to have that was really beneficial for your business that you're not doing anymore. I love that aspect of it too. It's just such a good reminder when you when you have other like-minded people mm -hmm. to be able to get together for two and a half days and just to synergize with everybody. Mm -hmm. I, I just love it. Um, let's talk about the industry awards. Right now, uh, we are accepting uh, submissions for the Home Staging Industry Awards. We've been doing these since 2007. Um, they are fantastic. They have grown throughout the years. The rules have changed a little bit. Every year if something happens, a rule's not quite uh, clear enough. We tighten it up the next year. Uh, we've done a really good job about doing that. We now have a new award system. The voting system is fantastic. And this year we have a new award for the real estate staging industry's most influential people. And so I know we have the Swanee Pool Power 200, the most 200 most influential people on the real estate side. So we want to do that for staging. So this is uh, the only category that you cannot self-nominate, but somebody else can nominate for this uh, for anybody. So I can nominate Helen, I can nominate Becky, and it's free to be able to do it. And this is something that once we get all the nominations in, all those people that were nominated will then get an email where they're going to put in a little bio and their photo and then we're going to send it out for everybody to vote and so we'll have a, a, a ranked list as just like the Swanee Pool 200 so we'll be able to do that we're super excited about that I think the awards are um, people ask about the awards and say well why would I you know why do I submit myself for an award well we have found if we do nominations for people in this type of award, it doesn't work because A, you don't know if that person wanted to be nominated. Now you're forcing them to come up with their own pictures, everything about their company and putting something on them. So we've done some, a lot of research and in these type of industries, it's common. Everything is self-nominating. The Stevie Awards, it's a self-nominating thing. So you submit something in order to be judged and ranked and to be able to get it. Mm -hmm. So over the years, we've grown so much and we found so many people were really deserving to be recognized, but we were only recognizing one winner. So then we started doing the top 10 list. And that was just groundbreaking. And one thing that I do know, I keep getting the same comments back from people where they say, you know, it was the best money that I that I spent. Because yes, you have to pay in order to, to enter the award system. But it was the best money that I spent because that top 10 list got me X, Y, Z. You do the press release, you put it on your website, your email signatures. Every time you're in the top 10 or you're the actual winner, that's just giving you more credibility and legitimacy to go out there and and really make an impact on your potential client. Because they look at that and they say, this person's a mover and a shaker, whether they're in a leadership position within RISA or they've won an award, all this adds to your own credibility. And we're really super excited about this one as well. And we also hear, I keep hearing from people, um, Susie Pereira in Canada, when she had won uh, her award, she said, all of a sudden, I won this award and I put, the, I put it out there and my business just exploded. And I think it has to do many facets, but one, obviously people see it, but I think it also gives you some confidence on the inside and it changes your mindset. When your peers have voted you into something, 
it, the confidence that you gain changes the way that you operate, just your demeanor even, and it allows you to go out and do more things. So she actually moved into a warehouse afterwards. Mm -hmm. She's like, I never expected this would happen, but all of a sudden, ev the universe, everything just started lining up and opportunities got in front of her that she didn't have before. Wow, that's exciting. That's exciting. Yeah. It's kind of like yeah. having reviews yeah. that are, that are on, on the internet, internet versus, internet. versus yeah. your life. Because people think, you know, you can you know, have reviews on your website, but reviews that come to Facebook and all the other um, independent, independent places um, have more weight. So just, I like that idea. And I've also noticed uh, locally here in Jacksonville, Jacksonville's a little slow to embrace anything new and unusual. But Risa is, 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 uh, Risa is. Uh, Risa is. Realtors know who Risa is. And I did not see that in the past. And I'm very excited about it. I wear my pin. And um, it's, it's really happening. I'm on the opposite side of the planet from where it originated. And I'm excited to see Risa being recognized on a global level. Yeah. I agree. That's one thing. We do get people that say, well, nobody knows who Reese is in my area. Right. And they won't. Great. Now we have some work to do so we can form a chapter. This is about, Reese is about giving our members these opportunities to do things locally because agents live locally. I could spend a lot of money on the national level out there in um, just doing things nationally and you can get hit and miss, but that's not going to make the impact that it does on the local level. Um, we've tried it in the past. It's just there's nothing better because agents work and live locally where all the stagers do. So when you form a chapter and you start doing things, you infiltrate their their area. You're speaking their language. And we are getting more, our phone is ringing more and more every day for people even wanting the staging to sell whatever agent should know class. Um, it, it's amazing. It's like we have now put on a thing where they can download the information so we get their contact information. And we're actually able to push those to the instructors. So I know we've put some in, in Florida as well. Um, it's definitely Florida is one of the bigger areas where people are wanting that information. So and that's and we have to thank you know our chapter leaders for that and for trusting in the process and what it is that we're doing because it definitely works. Mm -hmm. I love yeah. that. You know, years ago, years you know, ago, you talk you, you talk about the awards how they give you confidence, which which they do. They but do. I'm going to be perfectly honest with you, Michelle. When I first when joined, I first joined and I started going out and networking out with networking real estate agents or agents builders or flippers or whatever, I would always say, and I'm a member of RESA, which is the Real Estate Staging Association. Just to say that gave me confidence because it sounded like I was part of something very important, which I am, and um, it showed. That it shows that you're that credible, it shows that you're shows professional, that professional, it shows that you can be trustworthy, it shows you have integrity, just by saying you belong to this great organization. And people always ask questions about it. So it doesn't even have to be an award, it just means being part of this organization, which I think gives you confidence in doing what you do. Yeah, absolutely. The thing with real estate agents is they, real estate industry understands trade associations. So they understand women's council of realtors, the mortgage lenders and the title reps get involved as, as an affiliate with their local association of realtors. They have fundraisers, they have meetings, everybody goes. The RISA chapter concept is identical to women's council of realtors. We were patterned after that. Um, I love women's council of realtors. I belong since 2002. Um, changed my life to understand networking volunteerism. And a lot of people say, well, why will I go and do this? Networking and, and volunteering for a group and I look, why would you not? You're, that's growing your business. So when you're giving back on this level, it's giving you a platform mm -hmm. in order to market your business. So you're, it's networking volunteerism and it's marketing your business at the same time. So it definitely does work. And agents also understand when you say you belong to your group because you, have, you follow a code of ethics. Right. Um, they're, you know, you're agreeing to this um, self-governing uh, platform that we have in our industry because we're not government regulated. So that goes a long way as well as when people know that you know that you belong to a group that you're held to a higher code of ethics than others. Right. So Absolutely. Thanks Absolutely. for mentioning that. Yeah. Well, I've and experienced I that. people to start, people their, own start their own chapter. chapter. We started, we started a chapter, chapter in Jacksonville in 2010 with just two people. Just two people. 
and, um, and uh, Chanel and, and the gang, gang at headquarters were wonderful in giving us everything we needed, all the support we needed. It was easy. And I tell my students or my graduates, if you don't have a chapter in your area, you start one. It's it's too easy. And it will definitely the word will get out to realtors and other uh, people that that you're active, active you know, in on and it's something it's to be something proud of. Well, thank you. Our yeah, thank you. And if you think it was easy in 2010, I was just one person back then. <laughs> it's so easy now because I actually, we actually have a team of people. So we have Vanessa and Gina who work with the chapters directly. Myself and Jacqueline work more on the events and the education side. Gina also does events as well. Um, so it's really neat the way that we have this new onboarding process. So you can watch a webinar that tells you about chapters, how they work. And then Gina and Vanessa actually walk everybody through the process. We have a kickoff meeting, and um, then that leads to the next meeting. And then we elect a board of directors, and then we have a strategic planning meeting. And we, she does it with everybody. So she's definitely, uh, Gina has um, did an amazing job in the last two years of about bringing this all together and making it just a very, very streamlined, easy process in order to start a chapter. So thanks for saying that. I will pass that on to her, that everybody knows that it's easy and uh, smooth sailing. So that's going to wrap it up. We usually go 30 minutes. We're about uh, 37 minutes right now. So I want to thank you both so much for joining me today on Stager Talk. And if you are on the fence about going to RisaCon, hop off that fence, go to RisaConvention.com, click register, sign yourself up. You will not regret it. It will be the best investment that you have put into your business. And we will all see you there in July 26th, 27th, and 28th in Las Vegas. And then also check out the Home Staging Industry Awards. Enter somebody if you think is influential, who has inspired you, who has mentored you over the year years. Please nominate them and let's recognize these wonderful industry influencers within our own industry. And let's give them some honor and some recognition for all the work that they've done. And also submit yourself for a Home Staging Industry Award. It's super easy to do. All the directions are on the website, homestagingawards.com. Thanks again for joining us. Helen yeah. and Becky, yeah. I appreciate it, and we'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Bye-bye.